Today I'm showing you how to transform a flat painting, whether that's digital or traditional, into a repeat pattern. Hello everyone! Welcome to our business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. Repeat patterns. They are really cool because you can put the repeat tile into a multitude of different products like fabric, clothes, wallpaper, shower curtains, you name it. There are many different print on demand services like Redbubble or Society6, Spoonflower, where you can upload your repeat pattern tiles and then put them on a multitude of different products. Whether that's for your own personal use, something custom that you've made yourself, or whether that's to sell to other people and make some revenue from that. Now, normally when I create patterns, I draw all the elements on different layers so that I can build a file in a way that's really easy to make the pattern. I already have a tutorial on this channel on how to do that, so I'll link it somewhere on the screen and in the description as well if you wanna check that out. But what if you have just a painting that you've done, a flat painting, like let's say a watercolor painting, and you think that would make a really cool pattern and you would like to make it tile. But you don't know how to do that and it hasn't necessarily been built that way. It's just a flat painting, right? That does make it a bit trickier, but you can still transform that painting into a repeat pattern and today I'm going to show you exactly how. And a little fun twist today, instead of showing you on my own art like I usually do, today I'm showcasing another artist who is kind enough to lend us her paintings so that we can do the little demonstration today. So this is Mona Barbu. She's a wonderful traditional artist. You can find her on Instagram at mona.b.art. She makes these beautiful traditional paintings that are abstract and semi-abstract. They are absolutely perfect for repeat patterns and will look beautiful on many different types of surfaces. So let me show you how I will go about transforming one of her paintings into a repeat pattern tile. All right, so here we are in Photoshop with the first pattern that I want to show you. So this is a beautiful painting by Mona and this is literally as she sent it to me. This is a scan because I wanted to show you every single step of the way. <laughs> so this is a painting that's literally just as is nothing is prepared if you were painting specifically for a pattern you would want to finish all the shapes so you would want maybe even to draw over the border the little white frame just to finish all these shapes all of these hearts because now since we don't have the end of them we're gonna have to either find a way to erase them or to finish the shape while still matching the same exact texture and color so that makes it tricky but I'm going to be able to show you then what to do about that. <laughs> so first we want to grab the crop tool and we want to just crop out all of the white and all of the gray around the scan. There we go. We also have everything here on one layer, the background. I don't like this. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make the background white merge this so now our background is white and our actual painting is on a separate layer this is always good practice no matter what you're doing to have things on separate layers like this so now we're going to turn on pattern preview so click on view and pattern preview this is the main tool in photoshop that we use to make patterns i have tutorials on this that i've made in the past and i'm going to link them at the end if you want to see so this is what we have right now so we can see that this painting is actually ideal to make a pattern. This is going to look awesome. It's almost as if it was meant to be a pattern to begin with, but not everything matches up on all the sides. So there are multiple different ways to fix those borders. And I'm going to try to showcase a few different ways that we can do that. Uh, but here we have a solid motif. So these hearts that we need to complete. Thankfully, we have in the image other hearts that are similar with the inside white border. So we can take one of them and we can copy paste it and create a little motif that we can put on top to cover these borders. So I'm going to take this heart right here and I'm going to copy paste it. And so now we have this heart on a separate layer and I'm just going to go in. I'm going to tap on this icon, the rectangle with the circle in the middle to create a mask. 
And now I'm gonna pick a pen with just like a normal hard pressure pen. And with the black on, I'm going to erase all around to make this a self-contained motif. We could also use the eraser, but the eraser is very permanent. In this case, if I make a mistake, then I can just switch to the white and I can get it back. So this is a less like permanent way to do things, <laughs> which I like a lot. Okay, so the heart is now cut out. And now I'm just going to make sure to fix any things that I think are kind of too obvious because we're going to be repeating this motif. So anything that makes it too obvious that it is the same motif over and over again, uh, we're going to remove. We're going to try to make it a bit more generic. So first of all, I'm going to right click on the mask and apply layer mask just so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to take the uh what is it called the spot healing brush tool it looks like a little band-aid and we can use it to just fix some spots so anything that kind of sticks out there were a couple here just fix it to make it kind of more generic all right now there's also this place here where the white gel pen kind of overlaps I'm going to remove that by using the stamp tool right here. So I'm going to make a smaller brush and take a sample by holding Alt and then clicking somewhere. And I'm just going to kind of cover this area. All right, so now I think I'm satisfied with this motif and we're going to be able to use it over and over again <laughs> to fix our painting. So I'm going to duplicate this layer a few times just so we don't have to cut it again. And now with the lasso tool selected, we're going to right click into the image and select free transform. So now we can manipulate this heart. You can put it over the smaller heart, make it the correct size. I think we're going to have to make these like a little bit bigger than they were originally, just so that we can completely cover. So may have to like play with it a little bit to get it just right. I think this looks right to me. And now this is a perfect transition. This is what we want. So I'm just going to go around and do the same thing for all of these hearts. We can uh, manipulate them to an extent. So this heart, for instance, it looks a bit darker and it also looks thinner. So we can you know, make it thinner like this on the border. I can also control U to open the hue saturation panel. And then I can uh, modify the color until it's just right. It's maybe a little bit more orange. Yeah, this looks closer to me. We're going to go back to the free transform and now we're going to put it over it. Mm. Can manipulate the shape a little bit by making it thinner like this. It fits the original better, but also it looks different than the other heart. So that's always a good thing. Let's do one of a different color. We have this one here that's orange so let's do that one uh, if you're gonna run out of hearts you can duplicate them again just to make sure that you don't run out okay i like to put it side by side to get the color right because if i put it over then i won't see what i'm doing so put it side by side then do the color Try to get it exactly right. This one is quite yellow and it's more saturated as well. So that looks about right to me. And then I can put it over. Something else that you can do too is a flip horizontal. So it's going to flip it on the other way. If you do that every once in a while, it, it looks a little bit like a different heart. So that's good too for a little bit of variety. This one is kind of a different shape. So we can modify the shape a little bit so it covers better. 
or we can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I think this covers enough. So basically, we're just going to go all around and all of these hearts that have a white outline, we're going to cover them all using the same method. See you in a second. Okay, so now I'm looking all around and all of these hearts, the one that have a white outline, are now repeating perfectly. Yay! <laughs> now we have to take care of these background hearts so the ones that are very pale in the background are just kind of like shapes and these ones that are more solid but don't have a white outline i personally really like to work from the top layer and then to the background instead of the opposite because the top layer things are going to cover some stuff and so we don't want to for example you know kind of work here and spend a lot of time making this repeat when we're just going to cover it with a bigger heart anyway so i'm looking inside the image and i'm attempting to find a heart that we can use that we can copy paste so we have two options we can take something that's kind of a bit incomplete and then we could complete it and use that or we can try to find one that's completely done already i think this one is maybe the closest that we have it is fairly complete it doesn't have a lot of different like color differentiations within it so i think we're going to use this one i'm going to go on my background layer and then with the lasso tool i'm going to select this heart copy paste i'm going to either give it another name or change the color so i'm going to put the this let's say orange at least so i know to differentiate them from the other uh, top hearts and to organize a little bit I'm going to select all of the top hearts including the one that I didn't use and I'm going to put them all in the group so uh, now they're kind of out of the way all right and we're going to go in with our brush tool and our black and we're going to erase this using our layer mask Right, this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to apply the layer mask and then using the, what's it called again? Spot healing brush tool. <laughs> I will never remember that. I always call it the band-aid. So using the band-aid, I'm going to remove some of these little, we had like little hairs and little spots to make the heart more generic. All right, this looks pretty good to me. So this is our new heart. I'm going to make the background white again. Turn this back on. Now we're going to duplicate this several times again. So we have a bunch of hearts to work with. Okay, so now same thing again. We can turn on the top layer so we know what we're working with here. So now same thing, we're just going to be working heart by heart, but we have more layering to do this time. So to change the color of this one first, and then we're going to put it in here. So we want to cover the actual border to make sure that this repeats. So it has to be a little bit bigger for it to work, but now it's kind of overlapping on this part, <laughs> which that was fine before, and it needs to be under that. So I'm going to create a mask on this heart. And then we're going to erase this part. And we can zoom in, kind of put some back just so that it looks right. I'm just going to have to make sure that every single heart that we put in is exactly right all over. Okay, so now we have this. It works correctly at the border and it doesn't interfere with what we already had. So that's the first one done. So I'm going to spare you doing this over and over and over again. But this is basically what the process is here just heart by heart going to make them fit but this whole situation here we're gonna have to figure out what we do with that 
So I think I'm going to create a layer mask on the background. And we're going to cut around at least a little bit of this. See, we have kind of this giant heart in the background like this. I think that we can cut around it a little bit. Make it repeat like that. And now we only have to worry about making this yellow work. We could duplicate a heart if we wanted to, but it doesn't even look like a heart because it's such a background thing. So I think I'm just going to use the stamp tool. Select a sample and then on a separate layer, I'm going to fill this in. Okay, so now this area is filled with the yellow. I can decide exactly what shape I want it to be. All right, so now we have this corner here that's completely done and it repeats perfectly, which means that now our four corners are all figured out. So we just continue like that. And there we go, I went all around the border solving every single little heart until it is a perfect repeat. And we can see it even better if you go on view and then you unclick extra. It's going to turn off your little square preview thing and you can zoom out and see how your pattern repeats. So this is what we have done and it looks really seamless. It looks like it was made like this to begin with. So that's how we do it. Now I also wanted to demonstrate another technique and the second painting also by Mona is perfect to demonstrate that. So when we have specific shapes and motifs, individual motifs, like in the previous painting with the hearts, the copy paste method really works best. You copy paste an element and then you complete the parts where the pattern was cut off. But in this case, and in many cases, when you have a kind of a more unified background texture, there's nothing really to copy paste apart from the ferns that are specific elements, but everything in the background is more unified. And so the copy paste method really wouldn't work here. I want to show you a second method that works better for a situation like this. So first of all, we're going to use the crop tool and we're going to make sure to crop out all of the edges. Okay, again, this fern here is really problematic because it is being cut off. So we're going to have to find a way either to complete it or to remove it. Now that we're all cropped, we're going to right click and duplicate this background layer. And we're going to make the background white instead. All right. Then I'm going to drag out some rulers from the side and we're going to put them in about an inch in the painting. We want it to be a type of border. All right, something like this. If you don't have the rulers, you can tap view and make sure that rulers here is checked on. And then you're going to be able to just drag from the ruler on the side to get a new guide. Now we're going to click on image, canvas size, and we're going to select percentage here and we're going to do 150% on each side, making sure that the Canva extension color is white. All right. So it's just going to extend our canvas on every side. And then what I'm going to do is with the move tool, simply just move that to make sure that the painting is aligned on the edge on two sides there. So now all of our preparations are ready. I'm going to take the rectangular select tool and I'm going to select this part using the guide to choose where I stop. So everything right of this ruler here needs to be selected. I'm going to copy paste this. And with the free transform, I'm going to use the guides again to align it exactly where it needs to be. And then holding shift on my keyboard, I'm going to put it on the 
other side. I'm holding shift so that I can only move in one direction at a time. This way I'm sure that it's still aligned and I'm going to put it on the left side like so. So now I have another layer where the pattern kind of overlaps and I'm going to be able to use that to try to make the two parts work together. So I'm going to create a mask on this new layer and clicking view and deselecting extras just to forget our guides for a second there. I'm going to select my brush tool and then right click, pick something kind of a bit more soft, not the hard round pressure. I really like this watercolor brush because it has kind of an irregular type of uh, border to the brush. So it looks like this and it's more of a random pattern. So I like this a lot to, to do this uh, background matching thing. So now we're gonna make sure to select the black here to cut into this layer. And then I'm just going to paint over like so. It's okay if I go a little bit overboard because I can use the white to get it back if necessary. So for right now, I'm just kind of trying to erase the hard border and make these two pieces fit together. So we can see how we have another fern here under that's kind of getting in the way. That's definitely annoying because we don't want the other fern. We already have one right here. So this part here is going to be quite complicated <laughs> because these ferns are just overlapping like crazy. So for right now, I'm just going to try to delete this border. And I'm going to go below, continue here. Okay, so I think we have our preliminary cut here. We kind of blended these two pieces of art as best as we could. And we're going to be able to go in later with the stamp and stuff like that to try to make it a little bit better. <laughs> but for right now, good enough. And so I'm going to merge these two layers together. Control E, merge them all together. We're going to click the extras to get back our guides. Select all of this, copy paste. Align it with the guides and then holding shift. We're doing the same thing again, but this time up. There we go. So now we have this new layer tucked in and we're going to attempt to merge these two parts like we did previously. All right, so I think this molded kind of okay. We're going to merge these two layers again. Control E. Get our extras back. So now we're going to go around and delete these portions and this is our preliminary tile if you will everything is merged together now we're going to hold down control key and hold right over your layer here click and this is going to select the shape of your tile and then we're going to do image and crop to get back to this, we can delete the uh, guides now. So we're going to go view and clear guides. And now we're getting ready to go into pattern preview to see what we've done. So we have a repeat that works sort of okay. It's not too bad, but we can certainly now try to make it a little bit more perfect and a little bit of a better pattern as well. Because right now the repeat is very obvious. This section here, that's just not very good at all. And so I'm going to do view and extras. Just uncheck that so that I can see my square better. So we can see there's a section here where I messed up a little bit because it doesn't match up completely. I think I maybe I erased a little bit too much on this side. And so now we have this problem. We could fix this with a stamp tool, trying to like make things work together. But I'm thinking I see the pink shape 
here is being cut off and I want to add some pink in this area. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select in the shape of the pink that I'm trying to do and I'm going to do a little bit over what I need. All right, so now I have selected this. Most of my selection is on the other side, as you can see. It is pattern preview. I'm going to do copy paste. And now I have this shape that is on a separate layer. And now I want to modify the colors in this area to make it the pink. So I'm going to create a new layer and clip it. I'm going to pick this very vibrant pink color that I have here, fill it. And now I'm going to play with the layer mode to try to find something more appropriate. Ah, I think the color one works pretty good. So now I will add a layer mask to this layer. And with my watercolor brush, I can try to get these edges blended in. Okay, so this pink shape is looking more of a shape that repeats. This part inside though, I think that we can remove the coloring on this because I think it's gonna feel a little bit better if it's the sort of beige one. Okay, so this is what I have for this section. And I think this looks pretty good. We still have to make sure to blend in this art hedge. So I'm just going to merge everything together that I have right now. With the copy paste method that we did before, we wanted everything to stay on separate layers as much as possible. But with this method, really, it doesn't matter all that much. The stamp tool works easier when everything is on the same layer. So that's why I merged everything because I thought it was going to come to that. We're going to take a sample and then we can try to merge this. Okay, so this is the result that we have for this corner. And I think it blends in pretty well. I'm going to get back my square so I can see what we're doing. So every once in a while, we need to see where the edge actually is so we can look around and see if it repeats correctly. With the method where we copy pasted and then blended in the edges, the repeat should already be pretty good, but we still need to check it. So the line was around here. I'm continuing to look around the square, seeing if the repeat is correct. This is the same part that was repeated before on the other side. Okay, I can see here there's kind of a, a line in the color divide. So I'm gonna try to blend that in. The stamp tool comes in really handy for these things. Okay, so as it happens, it's pretty good now but we still have to fix some of the fern problems that we had, <laughs> remember this. So I think I want to use the stem tool to remove everything in this kind of area here. So we're gonna have to continue these leaves a little bit. We can copy paste one of the leaves maybe and use it to complete the fern and then we're gonna have to have like some sort of fern topper around this area. So first, I'm just going to delete everything that I don't need using the stem tool to kind of blend in all of these leaves. Okay, so here is what I have. I kind of managed to blend this a little bit, but I wanted to get on a new layer. I'm going to get some sort of grainy texture. I'm selecting this uh, white color and I'm just going to try to blend that in using a, something that's a little bit more grainy. Maybe Pastella. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Okay, so now I have eliminated this fern that was in the way and we can reconstitute this fern now. I have kept this leaf because I thought it was pretty well integrated and we're just going to continue the stem. So I'm gonna take, I think, Fountainia and I'm gonna pick the color of the stem and on, I'm on a different layer. And I'm just going to like attempt to create a stem that looks sort of okay. Now it looks very flat compared to the original that has more color variation. But since it's on a different layer, I can now make adjustments. So I'm creating a clipping mask on top and then I can try to add a little bit of color variation. I think I'm going to do a blur on this. And then maybe add a bit of noise to mix it in better. Okay, how's that? Now I think it looks pretty similar. So I'm just going to continue doing that. We could have copied some other leaves, but I think uh, we're doing well enough blending this in that I'm just going to continue the leaves like this manually. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing as before, a Gaussian blur and then some noise okay i think this is like a bit too much to reduce the opacity on this okay what do we think when we zoom out i think it looks pretty okay it doesn't look too different from the other fern so i think i'm i'm happy with that so I'm just going to go around and do this for all the ferns because we had some stems that were cut off. So over here, you know, I'm just going to continue. All right. So here is what we have now after blending in everything we have our square around here if we turn it off it blends pretty okay so a lot of stem tool for this one just to blend in everything but most of the repeat was actually created in the first step with the guides when we overlapped part of the existing pattern and then attempted to blend them together that is a method that works extremely well when you have a more complicated pattern like this where you have a background that's all over and there's no specific shapes that are contained that you can copy paste then i would suggest this method so there you go this is how you do it when you have a flat painting and you want to make a repeat tile out of it if you found this interesting and you want to know how to make patterns in all kinds of different ways I have some other tutorials on this channel that you might enjoy. First of all, I have a basic pattern tutorial using the pattern preview tool that I've showed you in this tutorial, specifically how to use different motifs and arrange them. And so I will link that on the screen and in the description. I also have another tutorial that shows you specifically how to do a half drop pattern, which is very, very popular from companies and helps make the pattern look a little bit less stiff, a little bit more mm, awesome. <laughs> so if you want to see how to make that kind of pattern, I will leave the link right here and also in the description below. If you'd like to know more about surface design in general and build a portfolio to, so you can get some gigs, uh, I also have a free guide that you might enjoy. It's called the seven essentials for your surface design portfolio. It's a free guide, completely free of charge, and it talks about the different kinds of patterns and illustration that you want to put in your portfolio to make the best impression, the best kind of marketable designs, the kind that 
sell over and over again. So if you want to find out about this, I will leave the link to that guide in the description. But that's it for me today. I really hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.